Hey guys, welcome back. We are gonna do a fun one today. We are gonna take this dollar store wine glass and we are gonna turn it into something super cute um, using a really fun dirty pour method. This is not just a basic dirty pour. We're gonna use a couple extra little tools. Um, so you can see I've already got it spray painted white. Um, and then this is a, one of those little cheap canvases from Dollar Tree. We're gonna put this underneath. You're gonna see why we're gonna double use our paint because the biggest frustration for me is when I do a dirty pour is wasting all that paint. So we're gonna make a little canvas and a cup at the same time. They'll kind of be matching, but um, we're gonna add a few little twists into what will be on the canvas. So we're gonna do these four colors. I picked some really bright colors so you could really see the technique that's happening with the colors. Um, these are not, so the only things that are on this table that are not from the dollar store are the acrylic paint and the silicone and the white acrylic paint. You can actually get a white acrylic paint from the Dollar Store though. It's in Dollar Tree in the crafting section, but this is the one I'm gonna use today. I got this from Hobby Lobby. I buy them in big bulks, um, but you can find white acrylic paint at the Dollar Store, so if you, if you don't have white acrylic paint, that's a good place to get it. Then I've got my little cup set up ready and my bottle of water and then my little, these are gonna be sink strainers. So these would go down in like your kitchen sink to catch any of the food or whatever. And they have all the little holes in it. And so that is what we're gonna to use today. So I am going to get kind of set up. I want you guys to see all the uh, supplies out and about. Um, so you can get a good look at what we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna get it all set up and we will come back. And by set up, I'm also gonna coat this one with the white. We want this to be covered in white paint. Um, okay, so we will get started and I will be right back with you when I have it all ready. All right, guys, I decided to add a fifth cup and actually pour some white today. Um, so you can see we have the cup. I just finished painting it. It's very wet. Um, the reason I paint it is um, the paint on it already is what's going to really help this uh, paint, uh, the dirty pour paint, slide down the cup better and cover better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about a tablespoon, just a little bit of water to each one of these. It makes it a little runnier, so it will slide down the cup better. You don't need a lot, it's just a little in each color. And I'm gonna mix them really quick. I'm doing this on camera because I have never done this one. And this is basically the basics of dirty pouring with a twist. So you can see it gets real watery and you just stir it up and make sure there's no chunks. And it, see, it gets to be a really great consistency, like drippable but not too watery. If you add, get a little too watery, you can start over or try to add a little more paint, but I would just really be careful about um, how much paint you get in there. I mean, sorry, how much water you put in there because it's really hard. It's not that e as easy as just saying, oh, add more paint. Cause you actually, if you get it too watery, you actually have to add quite a bit more paint. It's better to sometimes just to start over and re-pour your paint and, re and just add less water. So you can see this goes pretty quick. Then I'm gonna add the little secret ingredient for the fun elements of this. You, sorry, you guys are gonna hear my cricket in the background. I'm just nonstop cutting, doing print and cut right now. I've got a bunch of orders. I'm trying to get out, so it's gonna be working in the background the whole time I'm taping today. I tape in my downtime. While the cricket is cutting, I come over here and get a new video started for you guys. All right. So with this dirty pour, I'm gonna individually drop the colors on the cup. But you can do a regular standard dirty pour where you put all the colors in one, like slowly pour them in, but for this cup, I slowly pour them all into one cup and then pour that cup over the top. But for this cup, I am going to do them individually so you can really see this dirty pour. So I'm gonna balance that. So this is still really wet. I put quite a bit of paint on there. You don't have to worry about getting like lines on it because I painted the cup really well with the white. So when you look in, you're not gonna see all these lines. You're gonna see just the white base that I started with. So you put the strainer on the top. All, and then I put the canvas underneath and the canvas is gonna catch all the extra paint. And then I'm gonna take my silicone lubricant. I'm gonna... Sorry. I bought a brand new bottle because my other bottle looks so messy to have on camera with you guys. And I'm gonna add a little squirt to each bottle, to each uh, cup of 
Now this is not really watery, so it's not gonna add that aspect to it. And you don't need an, a lot, just like a couple little drips and you will see the fun, fun thing that happens with that silicone in the, oh man, I just put that right on that wet paintbrush, not paying attention. You'll see what happens, it's really fun. Mix it into the paint. So I'm gonna start with white. I'm just gonna pour a little white. And I'm just gonna go back and forth with each color and it will slowly start filling up and draining out. Oh, that one's a little, still a little thick. We want it just a zhuzh more of water. So if it doesn't pour easily, it's not thick enough. I mean, it's not thin enough. You need to add a little bit more water. That one was trying to stay in the cup too easily, so it wasn't pouring. And so I'm just gonna, and you can put a little on one side and a little less on the other. And it's starting to drip, but it's dripping out the back. So we'll try to get some more over here on the front. Ooh, up the table. And this is why I wasn't too worried about it. Um, sorry, mm, there we go. This is why I wasn't too worried about it being um, in a cup because I'm basically putting it in its own cup on the top of this cup, top of this glass. Right now it's like, it looks like a Mardi Gras cup. <laughs> that might be what I end up doing with it, is making it a Mardi Gras. All right, for some reason the camera stopped recording, so here we go, guys. We're gonna keep going. I was saying it looks like a Mardi Gras cup, except for now I'm adding the pink, which I guess could still add some Mardi Gras to this cup. It's a little thick. I'm gonna add a little tiny drop of water, literally a drop. Now, I thought I had this cup level, but it's moving around a little bit. And it's wanting to drain everything to the back. But I want you guys to see it out the front, so I'm gonna tilt it to the front. So you can really see what I'm doing. I don't normally do it on this, right here on the surface, guys. I'm usually doing this back in my workspace. So this is kind of me haphazardly working with it. And I usually do it on a football stand, but that is a big rigmarole to bring over here for the camera. So I used a water bottle today, and the water bottle works. It's just kind of flopping around on it today, but that's fine. That doesn't matter. Oh, I can already see, I will show you guys, once I get this all painted on there. And the messing, you see me messing with it a lot. That's okay. That's just gonna, it's not gonna affect where it drips or how it drips. I mean, it does, I guess, with the way you tilt it, but it will still pour out through these little funnels and give you this really cool fingered look. There it goes, now it's really moving. Add some more pink on this side. It's starting to get to that canvas. It looks really, really cool. Here it comes. I'm trying to move it, so see? You get these really cool fingers coming through this strainer with the colors. I'm trying to move it so the camera, so you guys can see the different sides and all the colors that are coming through that look really, really cool. Also remember, if you're gonna to touch it like you're moving it like I am, you wanna do it from the bottom rim so you're not actually messing with that paint. And always have a napkin next to you so you can wipe things up if you need to. I've got one right here off camera. So I can, if I need to, if I'm getting too much paint on my gloves or my fingers, I can wipe it.
Oh, wow. See, look at that beautiful side. It's gorgeous. I thought I wasn't going to, I thought that was going to be too much white, but it looks really good. And that, I wonder if that white will stay there. I was going to say that might almost even be the perfect pot spot to put the decal. Put some pink. Keep going. Now I'm going to use all the pink paint. Because all the leftover on the canvas is going to make a beautiful painting. Okay, I'm going to turn the canvas so you can watch this side. Let's see, I'll peek at the camera. Okay, and here is our last bit of paint. I'm gonna try to get this, maybe to sit straight up and down on that cup, or pretty close. There we go. Some more white and green we're gonna we're just gonna keep pouring guys you want the whole thing because you want you want enough paint actually dripped off to then land on your canvas unless you're not doing a canvas that's an, that is actually an optional part you can just do this on a paper plate and not save the paint I just use these little dollar store canvases because I don't like to waste the paint it makes me crazy so all that paint that falls off is actually gonna serve a purpose down there and make this gorgeous painting and there's a little bit of green in here left to scrape so we're gonna take it So now we've got all the paint in the little cup on the top, I mean on the strainer on the top. We've got our little trash pile over here. So I'm gonna just take this and lift it straight up and let all the rest of the paint fall on the cup. Let the little drips come down. Okay, and that's pretty much, that's pretty much it, what we're gonna get, I think. So what you can take, I'll move this paint out of the way, and just, I just dab this paint oops, towards the outer corners of the, toward the outer, edge, outer edges. That way when you start moving the paint around, these outer edges are pretty coated, so you're not trying to get completely crazy on moving this paint. And I just barely touched the cup right there. Okay, I'm going to set this off to the side. We are going to take the cup. Oh, it's a slippery little water container and move it to the side and now you see all those I'm actually gonna go get a rag clean my hands and I'll be right back okay here we go so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this paint around you're just gonna let it slide I don't let it drip quite off the edges yet. I just get it kind of move it around just a little. And then right before it drips, I move it to a different direction. That little punch of pink in there is really cute. Try 
trying to keep it in camera for you guys. It's hard to tell. Okay, now we get to the towards we're getting towards the end. You're gonna have to start letting it drip off, which is fine. And basically just slowly letting it move into all the cracks and crevices of the painting. I've got one tiny spot left. And then we're gonna go towards, really go for the edges. Almost there. This is kind of the fun part. This is like the dirty part of crafting which is always the fun part. So you can see, I'm just gonna kind of help the paint along on the edge just to make sure I don't have any white. And then I'm gonna come back for this corner just a little bit. But this is just a really cool thing to make that's gonna kind of match your cup. You can sell it as a set or you can use these as like a reverse canvas backing or when it dries, you can put some um, clear polycrylic over the top and uh, then put a decal on it or make it into like a super cute picture in a kid's room with a decal on it, a cute one. All right, now we've got that corner pretty covered. Now I'm just gonna kind of move it till I really like the way the shape is. Actually, I really like it just like that because I like the movement coming up the front. It looks like a little river. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like this. Now I'm going to show you guys a little technique. So that silicone that we put in there will actually call what it's called cells. Um, and when you heat it up, I'm going to, I got this little lighter. You can use your torch, but I'm trying to do this to where it show people that if you don't have all the tumbler tools, you can use simple things like a lighter. So what you can do is you can already even start seeing the cells. The cells won't show up too much on the cup because the cup doesn't stay still. The paint just keeps moving on the cup. Um, so, ooh, I can even see. Oh, if you guys were in the room, I'm sure you would have been warning me that that was, the paint was dripping off this cup and going towards my beautiful fur. So I'm gonna prop it up. Anyway, so you can take this um, and when you heat this up, you can start seeing these tiny little cells, but when you hit it with heat, those cells will slowly get bigger because it will pop any bubbles and just really ignite those cells. So you can already see that cell growing just from that little bit of heat. So you can do this with a lighter or you can do it with your torch. I'm just going to put this little bit of heat over the top, help those cells grow out a little bit with that warmth, pop any bubbles. Okay, and I'm gonna, we're gonna let this sit for about 20 minutes and come back and see what all the cells look like. Okay, we're back with the canvas. It's probably been about 20 minutes. Um, you can still see a bunch of these little cells form down here, down here. This area seemed to be affected the most, so there's probably, that's where the white, a lot of the white was, and had a bunch of that silicone in it, and it kind of just muddled it up a little bit. Um, it's just a kind of fun thing to do other than just having a flat canvas with just some paint on it. Um, I will let the, other cup dry, the wine glass, and then once it's dry, I will bring it back in frame and you guys can see that and I will let this dry. So these take dry, longer to dry than normal um, because there's so much paint on them. So it probably will be, I will probably be about 48 hours before I consider them dry. All right, so we will be back with those in a few days. Hey guys, we are back with the cup. It turned out absolutely stunning. We lost all the yellow. There's only tiny, tiny little bits of yellow in here. But it looks beautiful. I'm super happy with the way it turned out. Here, I'll take off the, move that out of the way for a second. See the, the, the lots of tendrils coming down, lots of arms and fingers. It came out absolutely gorgeous. Even the bottom looks absolutely stunning. I thought it would be more like a swimming pool up here. But those, as it dripped and kept going, it really made this beautiful, beautiful shape down this cup. Um, you can see it does have some little cells in it. That's from the silicone. It kind of adds a little fun texture to the cup. 
Um, we are going to do the hang method over this right now. I've got everything set. That's why I'm wearing my chemical mask already. I've already got my epoxy mixed here. And I'm going to do an ombre glitter on this one. So you've seen me do an of ombre glitter, um, but it's fun. I'm just, this cup would, I think would benefit from having a little extra glitz on it. This is a UV and glow glitter. So I think it's going to just kind of add a fun little element to this cup. This glitter will turn purple in the sun and it will glow in the dark. So I just thought, well, that's going to be really fun. So let's add it because it's pink. So it kind of matches and then it's purple when it turns in the sun. So we'll always kind of match this cup and then it glows in the dark. So we're going to add our few MLs to the top. That's plenty. Again, I overmix, guys, because generally off camera, I've got about four or five cups that I need to hang method. So I do the, my little video recording for you guys, and then I jump off and get onto my orders and keep going with some of my hang methods with the rest, rest of the epoxy. So we're going to drop this down. And again, I do the hang method because I run out of turner space or because I just need to do a thin coat or add, um, just add some glitter. Um, there's a bunch of different reasons to use the hang method. It's not just, it's, you don't have to only use it if you don't have a turner. I use it all the time to like, it, like this, exactly. I'm giving it a nice thin coat and then I'm gonna add my glitter and let it cure and then I'll do my overcoats on it. Or if you're doing, uh, let's say like a wood grain. Uh, if you're doing a wood grain, you, you can seal it and just put a super thin layer, like the hang method, over the cup um, and over the cup and then add your sticker. And that way, when you add your sticker, you don't lift off paint with the transfer tape because you have a nice thin coat, but a protective coat against that um, wood grain to protect it while you're adding your transfer paper with this, the decal on it. Because a lot of times what people have issues with is putting the sticker on and then when they lift the, the transfer paper, it lifts up the paint and the, the ink from their wood grains. So this nice little hang method coat would keep that from happening. So that's another good example of when you would use a hang method. Because you just need a very, very thin coat to protect it to put your decal on. There we go. So we got this all on. It's beautiful. Um, so now, oh, you guys, I'll be right back. I didn't go, I didn't get my paper towel to clean my right, hands. Sorry, guys. Now. Jumping back on. I always usually keep a paper towel sitting here just for this occasion, but... I forgot that in the small little bound details. Okay, so we're gonna work with our glitter. This is expensive glitter, so I'm gonna be real careful to catch it. Hold it, I can't get the bag open with my gloves. Okay, so when I do glitter from the bag, I just pop the corner just like this, and it'll shake right out of that hole. As you guys have seen in my other videos, I don't use shakers. I think they are a, woo, something on there. A waste of time, because I don't have time to take the shaker top off to put it back. So we're just going to pour a little on the bottom. And then let it fall off the edges and that's going to kind of give it an ombre look. I don't want to coat the entire cup. I just want a little bit to fall down the cup. So and you just kind of sift it, shake it. This is another way to do it. And just, you can see it kind of coming down the cup in little tendrils. Whoop. Looks beautiful. And that just adds a little glimmer, a little glitz, and a little more right here. A little glitz to the cup, but you can actually still see all the paint underneath. And it's really beautiful. You can still see the pattern underneath. And this, but this, gl this little glitter just adds a little shimmer to the cup. I mean, who doesn't love shimmer? But it doesn't necessarily have to do this. If you guys are not glitter users or you're not a glitter fan, you can skip this stage and just leave it as it is. It's all a creative process for you. Woo, got some on my gloves. Save that. Save every bit. Okay. And so there you go. I'm going to just hang this up, let it dry. That will just stick right onto that epoxy, and then we'll do a layer over the top. That's gorgeous. All right, I'm going to let this cure up, and we'll be back. So the canvas is dried from this one, from the uh, Dirty Pour, and it took a couple days, well, not really a couple days, probably a day and a half or so, um, because it was very thick paint and it just took a while, and as it dried, it curled the canvas up a little bit. So what I actually did was I turned it upside down, and I put something heavy on it, and it kind of flattened it back out pretty good, and I left it like that for a couple days, and then I framed it. Um, so now what I'm going to do is turn this into like a little piece of artwork to stick in a kid's room, or just something cute to decorate your house. Um, so I just chose, and so what I did was, I know this is an, this is an eight by 10, um, 
And so what I did was I just made a cute little decal that says be, she believed she could and so she did. Um, I'm gonna put this in my girls' room as a little decoration. So how, I wanted to show you guys how I do these big, large decals and get them straight. So what I do is I take it and I put sticky side out and I bend it. I don't bend it and fold it. I just actually just bend it up like this. And I can see that I can line it up like bottom to top. So I know that, the, that what I'm about to put down is the middle of the uh, sticker. And then I start from the middle out and I'm gonna press the center of the decal to the center of the glass. And I can see that's a little bit crooked. So I'm gonna lift it and do there. And then I open it, there we go. And then I'm gonna lay down the bottom first and keep in control of it and then lay down the top for second and smooth it all out on the glass. and make sure it's well adhered. But if you don't have a vinyl cutting machine, you can buy at the dollar store, they have a whole section of different stickers and a lot of them are actually clear and they're like wall decals. You can use one of those as well. You don't, if you don't have a vinyl cutting machine, you still have options to do something cute like this and just use one of those stickers or buy it at a, a, a same thing, like a, a sticker at Hobby Lobby if you, they, you don't see one you like at the dollar store. And then I just peel this away. And it's really pretty because by putting that on, um, I'm so stingy, I'm gonna save this huge piece of contact paper. <laughs> um, because I reuse my contact paper over and over and over. Um, so you can see that it actually kind of has a really cool like 3D look because the painting is set back and then the vinyl is on the top of the glass. So it gives it kind of like it's popping out of the image. So it's really cute. All right, so I just wanted to give you guys a little show you how to fold the, the large decals, put the middle down first, slide the bottom, and then, then slide the top. All right, we will be back with the cup. All right, here you see we have the cup. She's all finished. She's got the glitter and I put some final coat of epoxy on it. And you see all these beautiful tendrils coming up from going through the kitchen sink strainer. And it's just gorgeous. And this glitter just really makes it pop and a little extra glitz and glamour. And you can also put a name decal. You can decal this all up as you want, but I'm gonna leave it plain. And then you have the matching uh, canvas and beautiful frame. This is a really inexpensive frame. I got it at Michael's and used my coupon. And this is the dollar store um, canvas in the back that we use for the dirty pour and just a simple vinyl. And if you don't have a vinyl cutter, you can use any sticker and put it up here. Um, and it's really, really fun. It's a great little project, makes a wonderful like matching gift. People love this. Um, so I hope you guys like this tutorial. Hope you learned something good, got some good tips out of it. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Also feel free to ask me questions. I try to answer as many as I can, as fast as I can. If I don't get to your question, there's a good chance I didn't see it. Um, YouTube does not always update me when I have questions. If, you, if I don't get a response from me on new, YouTube, jump over to my Facebook group, ask me there and send me a message. I really am here to help you guys. I wanna help you learn, help you grow and make beautiful things. All right, I will see you on the next video guys.